Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Meaningful People podcast. This episode is powered by our friends at Alpert and Associates. Pesach is coming up, people, and you might be swiping that credit card left and right, but it's important to know what you can spend because you're just kicking that down the road. You need to know what you're going to be able to spend, and that's why you need to call Moshe Alpert, Alpert and Associates. You give him a call at 718-644-1594, email him at at albertmosha at gmail.com because um, if you don't know what you can spend, you're going to find yourself in a little bit of a bind. So get your finances right. Make sure you know what you're spending. Know, make sure that you're not being irresponsible and give them a call. That's 718-644-1594 or you can hit the link in the description in the show notes of this episode and hit them up directly on WhatsApp. Um, we'd also like to give a big thank you to our new friends at Collars & Co. Okay, so here you are. You're boarding a plane for Yanta. If you're heading to a nice destination or maybe even going into your car driving somewhere and your shirt is... How am I packing my shirt? I have. I don't want to bring a hanging bag on a plane. I'm not going to stuff it in my suitcase. Well, don't worry. You see the shirt I'm wearing right now? you're listening, then maybe go to YouTube. But this is a shirt from Collars & Co. The funny part is that the collar looks like a dress shirt collar, but the rest of the shirt is pretty much like a t-shirt slash polo shirt. It is super comfortable. And not only that, you know, this company, Collars & Co., they did, a, they did a deal on Shark Tank from Mark Cuban and Peter Jones, who invested over a million dollars into this company. It's owned by a Jew. This is a shirt that has no dry cleaning necessary. It's perfect, perfect for travel, wrinkle resistant. Um... Long sleeve dress shirts are uncomfortable. They're hot. They're scratchy, especially under sweaters like this, L- literally like I'm wearing it right now. This shirt is revolutionary in the shirt wear field. So head to collegeandco.com and get yourself a few pairs, the- a pair of these. And I'm going to give you a promo code right now. That's uppercase capital, the whole word, meaningful. You get 15% off. That's meaningful for 15% off any orders over $100. You also get free shipping. So make sure to use these promo code. Make sure to order these shirts. If you're headed to Florida, it's hot. You don't want to be sweating in a regular long sleeve, crisp potato starch white shirt. The only thing potato starch on Pesach you should be having is in the food, not on your shirt. This week we sat down with Maya Namdar, who really, really opened us, opened up to us about her story, about losing her daughter, Liel Dina, uh, just you know a little over a year ago, uh, an awful, tragic accident. Um, she was very, very open, raw, and honest. She talks about what her family went through and the Amuna that she had to have uh, in order to get through what she went through and what she continues to go through. Uh, we give a big thank you to Maya for really coming on the podcast and just being as honest and real as she was. Um, if you are someone who is sensitive. This is a, a parts of the story can be hard to listen to. Um, so have that in mind. Maybe have a, a box of tissues nearby. Um, but all the inspiration derived from this episode really should be a schuss for the neshama of Liel Namdar, Liel Dina. And um, listen, we, sh- we should all be reunited very, 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 very soon with the coming of Mashiach. Enjoy this episode, everybody. You are listening to the Meaningful People Podcast. The podcast featuring our nation's most impactful, influential, and meaningful people. Um, okay, by the way, the Namdars, you saw the perm costume? I did. It was a thank you, Hashem. Yes, it was a thank you, Hashem. I saw you in the thank you, Hashem reel. In the thank you. Yeah. You were prominently <laughs> featured. Okay, that's legit. In that reel. <laughs> Did you see the reel that I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I saw it. Yeah. That's how you know you made it. Yeah, we made it. I made it. <laughs> this thank you, Hashem, make the, the skirt thing or did, did Maya's place make the skirt no, thing? No, it's so funny how many people have asked me and I'm like, no, it's from thank you, Hashem. They make that. And we literally got it. I Not think the Wednesday onesie, or the Thursday. Sk- no, I got two dresses for me and my daughter. They make the skirt? We got it on like Wednesday oh. or Thursday, right before Purim. It was oh. going to be no costume this year. What? It was going to be no costume. So like last minute, again, my son... Yeah. I was like, oh, you got to do something. And I'm like, I'm so over and like done with it. Yeah. Not doing it. And then my daughter was like, let's do the thank you, Hashem. It'll be cute. And then before you knew it, he was like. Listen, you can thank run, you, Hashem. You, you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> she has a son of Nishmas. All right, Weimager. Wow. We were on uh, Nishmas. What was it called? Shark Tank? Yes. <laughs> what is we, that? We, we, went, we went to Nishmas and they were pitching ideas for technology for like kids, how to use it better. And we were part of a panel of people who were like voted the winner. 
and they it was like really cool. Yeah, a few some, initiatives. Some like really cool initiatives. But we're not going to talk about Nishmas the whole night. We're just going to give a shout out to Nishmas. Why not? They're good. Oh, okay. They're, they're good people. Oh, actually, on and live. Oh, we're so on. We're right not now. live, but we're oh. but we're rolling. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's how that's how Naki rolls. By the way, he just like rolls right into okay. it naturally. But Naya Maya Namdar Naya Naya Maya. Mandar. That, Namdar. That, yeah, <laughs> Maya <laughs> Namdar. Do it with the Persian accent. Yeah. How do you say the Persian accent? No, we just say Namdar. Namdar. What? By the way, this is our second Namdar in like two weeks. Is that right? We had Razel and Danny Namdar. Right, and are he's you, Persian. Are you related to him? I'm not related to him, but I know his family, the Namdar family. They're from Great Nicoso. Oh, for real? You know, like Namdar for the Persians, it's like saying like Smith or like... For real? Yeah. Wow. Like Klein, you know? that's. It's like a maybe. generic last name. It's not really a generic, but it's like a lot of Namdars. Wow, so, interesting. Yeah, you said well, he's from Great Neck. What happened to the whole? He's from Great Neck. He's what happened to the whole? No, I saw Sweden he has thing. family. Sweden, yeah. He has family in Great Neck. I think he has oh. an uncle there. Oh, very cool. Yeah, very cool. They were in American Jew the other day. Right. Yeah. You know about that? I missed them. I went today. That American family. That that Jewish family. That Jewish family <laughs> wasn't that wasn't that American? Did I say dream American? Yeah. That's funny. They're very non-American. <laughs> Erroneous. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for for taking time out to to do this. Um, Baruch Hashem, we're able to, our schedules were able to align, we're able to get you here. Baruch Hashem. Thank you. Know, you. Thank you, are. Hashem. Yes, thank you, Hashem, always. Um, so I, I want to start this episode, it's not kind of on theme, what we're going to talk about. You know, you wore the Thank You, Hashem uh, costume for Purim, and it's really not a costume for you. You know, it's no, really what you live. Not. I live it. And, and you breathe it, and um, it was probably like that your whole entire life, but it became probably a little bit more... Um, Difficult or, or not even difficult is not the right word, but had to come more to the forefront um, a little over a year ago when your your family was was struck by something so unimaginable. So if you can, I guess, take us back to that time, January 2021, I believe it was. And um, December. 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 December 10th. December 10th. And that was the day that your, your life just changed forever. I'm a changed person. Like I... I say like I'm, I'm not the same Maya, like not at all. Um, yeah, listen, when you when you get hit with such a, um, I can't even call it a challenge, you know, yeah. I mean, like a, a tragedy. I don't even know what to call it. It's um, it's so huge. It's so um, it's so painful. It's so crazy. It's you can't even like describe the pain. And um, I don't know if I read it somewhere or somebody mentioned to me a little bit afterwards and they said to me, a pain of losing a child is not a pain that you can describe to another human. It's not a pain that a human is supposed to feel. Like we, we don't know how to handle this pain. And, and I think this is like where it was like this little like um, turning like idea in my head where... Um, they said to me that the pain that Hashem feels being away from his kids, being away from us, not having his shechina, not having the Beit HaMikdash, being away from his home, he wants us so badly. That's the pain. And only Hashem can feel the pain of um, not having a child with you. So you can't explain that pain to a human. It's only Hashem can understand it. And I think it was from that point that I, I understood that it's there's no way it's just Hashem, like I, it's just Hashem. It's nothing else. That's no. it's it's it's. I love how you framed that. Even it's like it's not something that someone who didn't go through it and no one really should ever go through it can even imagine. And that's you the can. pain that Hashem feels for not having us. Yeah, it's it's very inhuman. You can't you can't describe it. You can't like if. You know, even if like sometimes, a lot of times it's like a lot of like PTSD, like we go back to that night, like what happened and like how it happened. And like sometimes I'm like, I, I'll dream about it or like I'll think about it throughout the day. Like I remember as like we were understanding what they were telling us, like I just remember like feeling very nauseous. Like I remember I just wanted to throw up like from mm -hmm. the, like it was, you can't explain this pain. It's not like, I, you can't explain it. You can't. You really can't. It's it's a very, as I said, it's a very Hashemi. You know, it's 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 out of huge. body, extremely. Yeah, the very. human condition is not designed to endure that type of pain. No. 
Right. And, you know, Nachi and I were living in the five towns at the time. And Miriam lives in North Woodmere, which is where my wife and I and family, we live. And it struck very, very close to home. I drove by that intersection that night. And we're all very, your story is very, very close to our home. Right. For, for a lot of our listeners, though, that might not be familiar, um, if you're open to sort of sharing what happened on that Shabbos leading into Matzah Shabbos and how, how the story unfolded from your perspective, if, if you can. Sure. So December 10th, um, Saturday night, it was the Sternberg um, reunion. And um, Liel actually went to Sternberg for the first time, like that past summer. Closer? Closer? You could, you could bring it to you even. Okay. Um, Perfect. So, okay, so Persians don't do sleepaway camps. <laughs> oh, for real? Okay. <laughs> we just don't. Write that down, Mama. Kids, <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Kids are our home. And um, Liel, basically, she had like really like begged me to experience and to go to sleepaway camp after speaking with her teachers and the, the school and we kind of uh, figured that like Sternberg would be like a right place for her mm -hmm. she went um in the summer for only half of the summer that's the only thing we agreed for and she came back she was so excited she was in such a high from camp and she was literally counting down like months and weeks for the reunion like when i say counting down I haven't yet gone through like her stuff or her books or stuff, but um, she from school. What do you call it? Not the journal, you know, where they write their homework, um, like a calendar, like right. a little book, a calendar, and um, everything in there is written in pencil, so she can like cross out if it's like a test or a final. And she had marked the Sternberg reunion with like highlighters and markers and hearts, and that's the only wow. thing in the calendar that has like. Yeah, you don't understand what the December 10th looks like on that calendar. She was that excited. And um, so the reunion was here, right? And the location of um, yeah. where was the reunion? In the, It was in a shul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I believe so, yeah. It was somewhere in Woodmere. Yeah, Woodmere, I, I Woodmere? forget the name and I, I rather like... like yeah, not, uh, <laughs> we don't, we don't got to talk about it. Right. So um, because we live in Great Neck... Mm -hmm. Um, it would have been like a little bit challenging to take her on a Saturday night, which I offered. I told her, I was like, I'll take you Saturday night and I'll bring you back. I'll carpool. She said, Ima, you know what? I have two of my friends coming from Canada and we want to spend Shabbat together, um, the Meltzers. So she went there for Shabbat. She spent Shabbat with them. Um, yeah, let's say Shabbat. Actually, she called me up as she was like packing her bag. We were on FaceTime together and, um, she was just like so excited to tell me like about like, how Shabbat was and, She's like, what time are you going to pick me up? I said to her, you know, I have uh, parent-teacher conferences the next day at South Shore. I'm going to come pick you up right afterwards. She's like, great, I have enough time to sleep. She was like packing, getting ready, telling me what she's wearing to the Sternberg party. And um, and that's it. We FaceTime, we spoke on the phone, and, and that was it. And, and we went to sleep. And we woke up to our doorbell. Um, that there was an accident. Um, the accident was literally, I think it happened three minutes after they left, after she got picked up. Um, I'm going to say it anyway, so people like would know, but like, I don't like to give it like any acknowledgement, but like the accident was due to a drunk driver, but I'm at such like, a different place in my life right now that it was all Hashem, and it yeah. was Yad Hashem, and that's the only way that I could wake up every morning and be like, okay, I can do today, because because Hashem is in my life, and I know Hashem has done everything, you know, bad, good, whatever it is, and I'm taking it, so, you know, so a lot of people always ask me, like, so what happened? It was the, yeah. And I'm like, it was a drunk driver, but it's not, like, you know? It's really interesting, because, you know, this, this happens to a lot of people in the world. Unfortunately, they lose people to drunk driver accidents. And there are people that devote their entire lives to, um, you know, spreading information and awareness against drunk driving. And, and it's almost like they channel the loss that they feel yeah. towards their child, towards that thing. And, and which is important and, and it's a terrible thing, drunk driving, but it seems like you took that same situation and you channeled your loss 
towards Hashem. I don't know how I would be able to live with it the other way around. Right. I don't. I don't think I would. I would be sitting here. I don't think I would be who I am. Um, it, it would. There's just. There's no other way. There was. There would be no other way. Um. So, this is like. So that there was the accident, and the details from what I know from the accident is basically stuff that I heard like later on. You know, I wasn't even aware what was going on that first week. You know, I wasn't sure we weren't asking questions. I didn't even know it was a drunk driver until a few days later. Uh, my phone was taken away from me. Well, the accident kind of went viral on the news. It yeah. was everywhere. It was even in Israel, and it was everywhere. So, you know, they were trying to protect us, so they took phones away from us. So we really, I, I did not know until like Who a few made a decision? Later. That's a very, that's a very smart decision to take the phones away. I'm just curious. Um, so basically the first, so this was Saturday night mm -hmm. and I mean, the second they came, they rang the doorbell. My younger son wasn't home. He was at a friend's house actually here in Woodmere. He wasn't home. And, um, it was just me, my husband, it was Natalie and Emmanuel. Um, when you get a sh news like this, like the, the Hatala was like dealing with us, like my son passed out, my daughter couldn't breathe. Like I thought like I, I died. Like it was just like, it, it was just insane. So nobody's really thinking phone. Yeah. Um, this kind of like was like this till the morning hours. And then the morning hours, like people started hearing like and started coming over like family and stuff. I mean, I don't remember exactly. It's like a blur, but I remember in and out, like my sister came and. Um, it was Hatsala that, that rang your doorbell. It was Hatsala, and the hardest part about this is that, and Chasdei Hashem also, like, thank you, Hashem, is that the Hatsala guys that came to our door, it's our best friends. Um, I remember when the doorbell rang, I jumped out of bed, and I looked at the clock, and I, I think it was somewhere close to maybe like 1 a.m. already. It was maybe like 12-something, and I jumped out of bed and I said to my husband and I said, is Emmanuel home? Cause I, he goes to play basketball Saturday night. And I, I thought like he was ringing the doorbell and I couldn't understand why he was so late outside. And he said, no, Emmanuel got home. He's sleeping already. And my daughter was out. Nellie was out on a date mm. with David <laughs> that night. Oh, wow. um, but I knew she had come home already. So I jumped out of bed and I said, you know, like, so my husband ran to our window and he said, why is Navid's uh, truck here? Navid is a Hatala guy. He's my husband's best friend. And I said, Navid's truck, Hatala, like what's going on? Like the kids are in bed. Um, from there, I don't like remember. I think I just rolled down the stairs. There was a lot of screams, yelling. My kids woke up. It was just a lot of like chaos. chaos. Yeah. But then I remember the first face that I saw was Jonathan Aminoff. Yeah. And, um, and then I saw... The other Hatala guys, which they're all in our community, they're all in our shul, we're all. So, yeah, so they were there. Um, I don't know if, God forbid, if it wasn't the Hatala guys, and well, I'm thinking if, let's say, if like the police had to dispatch someone to come and like break the news, I don't know what would have been. I mean, they came also with um, with our rabbi and his wife, and they brought another Rav, and it's... Um, not to say he made a difference or he was like better, but I'm just, sometimes when I think about those moments and I say, if it was I, imagine he wasn't yeah. a face we knew. Imagine if he was like, you know, someone that would just come and say the news to you, you know, and it's, so it's crazy that I'm saying even thank you Hashem to that. It's like, yeah. thank you Hashem. You I, ever, you ever, I mean, think, you ever think that you'd be saying thank you Hashem to that? Having gone through what you've gone through? No, sometimes I even like, I listen to myself and I think I'm crazy. <laughs> like I'll talk and I'll like in my brain, I'll be like, what is wrong with you? Me like, too, by the way. I just, that's, I listen to myself. I'm like, this guy is certifiably, just like, <laughs> but different maybe. Yeah. I want to I keep you in that, in that scene for a moment before, before you move through it. And I want to use this opportunity to call some sensitivity to our community around spreading news. And yeah. you oh, shared right. you were talking about the phone. Yeah, you shared that your phones were were taken away right. from you, so, which is very sensitive to treat you. Right. Just to to call some sensitivity to the topic of how quickly we are, how quick we are to spread news, good or otherwise. I think you're uniquely positioned to to bring some sensitivity. So I'm actually to that gonna topic. share something about that. So whatever. I mean, this was in the middle of the night. No one was 
<clears throat> attending to their phones, you know. Um, the next day was just chaos. And then they were talking about like, like, you know, burial, taking Liel to Israel. Like it was just like the, the whole day was just chaotic. <clears throat> we had from um, Project High, from High Lifeline. I mean, I'm sure you guys know her. Aliza Zaha Safir no, was Zahava. She was yeah. like on top of like behind the scenes. Um, I think they made sure that the phones were away. Um, because I remember like, I think it was a deal two later. I said to my sister to check something on my phone. And she was like, just don't worry about your phone right now. And I'm like, where is my phone? Like, I just needed her to check something. And she was like, you don't need your phone right now. Like, I guess my phone was also going crazy. Like people were just messaging yeah. and it was just like a lot going on on there. Um, but you saying the sensitivity, I'm just going to share something on that. I think it must have been the fourth or maybe the fifth day. I don't, I, I don't remember. Um, and I don't remember what it was that my sister actually, she was in charge of my phone and she wanted to show me something that somebody posted, something special. I don't remember what it was, um, but it was, it happened to be on Instagram. So she held it for me to show it to me. And then it went to the next slide of whatever Instagram that was. And it was talking about Liel, Dina, Namdar from Great Neck was hit by a drunk driver and like the information was there. Oh my gosh. And I just got a glimpse of it and I remember screaming and I said it was a drunk driver. Like I went like I went nuts because I did not know news yet. Right. And Aliza was there and she was like, Who showed her the phone? Take the phone away. And like I was like, What else are you hiding from me? They're like, we're not hiding anything. It's just you don't need to hear things from social media or from people. Like, this is why we're here to like explain you know and it's like there you go that sensitivity you know um they do a, and they do a really amazing job those people oh my gosh project high you know and, and um, unreal they're unreal they're unreal um first of all i never knew such a thing existed as like project high right it's and like what zahava does like it, it's just it's unreal to think that in our you know, to say, Mika Amcha Israel, to think like in tragedies, to have people for these kind of situations, you know, when the next day, Sunday, I remember they were like, at one point, they were scared. They wanted to bring my parents over, but my parents weren't doing well. And like family, my, everyone, nobody was functioning. Leo's friends were coming and like the neighbors. And it was any person that walked into the house, there was like that shock. So the first thing you do when you react to a shock, you scream. So there was a lot of yelling, a lot of screaming a lot of chaos, a lot. Nobody knew what to do. Yeah. Nobody knew what to do with us. The only thing they knew what to do with me was like, give her a pill, give her a pill, open your mouth, take this. They just wanted me like numb. Sedated, yeah. Otherwise it was like, what is going on? I lost my train of thought what I was just saying with that. Where was I? Uh, Chai, the, the organization. With Chai, with Project High. You see when I get into thoughts and like again, <laughs> all of a sudden like yeah. I'm visioning that day and I'm like, what was I just saying? So that day was crazy, and in the afternoon, it was Sunday, that I will fully remember, because that was the only time that I felt some kind of a sense of control. It's like, imagine in the middle of the night, you're being breaking with this news, and it's like, you don't have control over your life. Like, there's just no control, and the pain is just, it's like out of the gazoo. Like, you can't, you can't control the pain, you can't control anything, and the only thing that Humans can help to, to help you to control is by giving you meds to calm down. No one could help me. Sunday afternoon, there are hundreds of people in the house, hundreds, and no one knows what to do with you. And people were just like, you know, if everyone's trying to do something else, put water on her, give her this, give her air, have her get up, have her sit, sit down. Like, you know, like you're, you're not talking, you're in shock and people are like telling you what to do. There's no playbook. No, no. there was nothing. No, nobody knew what to do. Like, what do you do in a situation like this? And Aliza and um, Malka came into the room and they introduced themselves and they said, hi, I'm Aliza, this is Malka. We're from Project High, from High Lifeline. And I remember like, I couldn't talk, but in my head and I'm like, nobody has cancer here. Like, I don't say why High Lifeline is in my house. Like, <laughs> right. you got the wrong house. Like, okay. You know, he was just like, yeah. but I couldn't say that to them. But I remember thinking that and... And then they explained to me that um, they come and like they, they came to help and she got everyone out of the room and um, she she basically like didn't tell me what to do or what not to do. She you can 
it's just it's amazing how trained they are yeah. she was trying to give me some kind of that little control to feel a little bit of a control in that moment so it was those little things that like you have not gone to the bathroom since yesterday do you want to go now or would you like to go in five minutes you know wow, wow. And i was like in five minutes she's like okay so th this is what is happening. They like bring you back down to earth. Yeah, in a way. she's like, this is what is happening. We, um, there's a flight that's set, and Liel is going to Israel. Effie and your mother-in-law, they're both flying with Liel. Is that's what you wanted, right? And I said, yeah. And she said, okay. So now this is what's going to happen. You're allowed to shower now, or we can give you five minutes. You can relax now and you can, re you know, like everything was like little, little tiny decisions, that decisions, you can make, yeah. little decisions where I felt like in control. I was telling her what I wanted, you know, we're giving you some autonomy. Right, and then she said, I'm going to give you some time alone in the room. So do you want me to sit right here on the corner or do you want me to sit right outside the room? We can't leave you alone. So where would you want me? So I said to her, you can be outside the room. It's okay. You know? So, that was just like, it was, I can't, it, it sounds like so little and so nothing, but they took the chaos in the house and they just kind of, I don't know. They restored some of your autonomy where you feel like everything was taken out of your control and they were little by slowly giving you little decisions, little choices. Right. And then you would think, you know, in situations like this, when you, they were taking you, I'm just thinking if they were not there and just thinking the way my family was there and the way it was like shocking and like this whole tragedy, it's crazy and everyone's screaming and everyone's on meds. Who would think to tell me, um, you know, what shirt do you want to wear? You'd be comfortable with because we're, we're doing Cree on you in the airport. Like who would dare to say such a thing to me? But Aliza said it to me so like she was so sensitive. And so like, even though I was crying and I was screaming, but I remember her voice and I remember how soft it was and I remember hearing it and I remember actually thinking about it like she said to me you know would you like to wear an undershirt under like do you know where it is do you want to tell your sister she's like do you have safety pins here like you know like she thought of details that people wouldn't think you know yeah. and because of the way she spoke I remember I remember those words I remember everything that she said um they were amazing yeah, and it's like they have the worst job in the world. The worst job in the world. They have to walk into, and nobody wants to see that. You know, it's like nobody wants to. I lo Zahav is amazing. Zahav and is Ma unreal. And, and every, they're, all, they're all incredible. But like, you see them, you're like, oh no, like, don't come here, you know? But they, they do, they, they do uh, work that you didn't, you, a human can do. It's crazy. So it's really amazing what they did for you and your family. They're there, I, I will have a car to talk to them like for the rest of my life. And it's crazy because this is somebody that I wouldn't want to ever see again or talk to, you know, because I, I associate them with that night. But, you know, we've, we've become actually very close. Uh, me and Zahava, we meet like very frequently. I'll come out. We'll have like lunch dates. Um, me and Aliza always catch up with each other. Um, you know, they came to my simchas and like we're, nice. we're very connected. You know, something that um, after it's actually my, my brother-in-law's yard saves today was there today wow. it's been four years and something that and you know my sister Malky and right after you know they got the news that he had passed away which is you know he was at work and it was just crazy chaos the kids were in school they brought him home from right. school and I remember it was also like people going I crazy that and day so clearly wild and Zahava which was like none of us knew her I didn't know her but she was like the it what was, you're describing of like okay everyone she's taking everyone away I, like yeah Remember she, um, everyone like was just here, take this Malky, take this, take this, take this. Yeah. And Zahava like sat her down and said, you're going to, you're going to have to feel it at some point. And right now it's Shiva. If you don't feel it now, you're going to feel it in a month right. or in a year. So you're going to have to go through it. And I remember it like, it's like the worst thing, but it was so, so yeah. true. Did you have like that similar experience of, yeah. of think of fear hearing like, this is, this is real. And yeah. you're going to have to feel it. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to do Shiva without them because nobody else knows what to do. Nobody else. It's like, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I was like, I, I replay and I replayed in my, in my head when they walked into the room and like in that night. And, and again, I, I don't know. And now I'm going to sound crazy. Thank you, Hashem. Really. I, 
I'm in a very different place today. Um, you know, I also during the um, during the shiva is when I had found out about Leo's text. Yeah, you know, from the car. Which so, text is that? I'm sorry. The please remind me to say shema. And um, you know that may, you know like all these little things they make it. That's what makes it that you can see. It's like Yad Hashem. For the, for mm-hmm. those who aren't familiar, uh, the story. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I, it's like I say it over and over. So, so Momo here doesn't have WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> He's on iMessage, so he has. So I'll say, I'll say it like very quick because sure, sure. I think like many people know the story. Um, it's, sure. So I'm actually going to tell you how I found out on Thursday night. Um, it was the um, they. They did like an event. It was the Thursday night, the night of the Shiva. They did an event in the shul where they made it because our house was closed. No one was allowed to come. So they made an event that was open to all of Leo's friends and to whoever wanted to come. I did not go. I was home with um, my friends and Aliza. She was there with me too. And my husband, the boys, Natalie, the whole family, they went to the shul. And this is, you know, people came to see them there. And they brought Rabbi Pesach Kron. And he spoke... Um, about Liel, and he basically did a little bit of research about Liel and about the accident, and he came to share some beautiful stuff about her. And I am listening to this um, on a laptop. It's on Zoom. It's on. It's on live. So I'm listening to Rabbi Pesach Kron, and then he starts talking about the moment of the impact of the accident. And Liel had texted her friend at 10:54. Um, Please remind me to say Shema. And then he said that someone showed him a screenshot from the neighbor's surveillance camera where you can see they screenshotted the moment of the impact where you don't see anything. You just see this like big, crazy, bright, like light, like light explosion. And when you do a screenshot from the surveillance camera, so you know, like on the bottom, you have like the minutes and the date. Yeah. So when you screenshot it, it was like 1054 and let's say 17 seconds, like something like that. Her text on her phone is 1054. Wow. So I'm listening to him and I'm so confused, right? Okay, again, I did not have a phone on me. I didn't hear any of these stories. And my sister sat next to me and I said, Tal, what is he saying? What Shema? Like, She's like, yeah. Um, I'm like, no, 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 wait. What is he saying? The screenshot. She's like, do you want to see it? I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, you have the, this on your phone? She's like, yeah. I'm like, why don't you tell me? She's like, because I can't show you everything now, like slowly. And I'm like, show it to me right now. So for the first time I saw it, as Rabbi Pesach Kohen is speaking on the laptop, it's live. She's showing me on the phone and I'm seeing the screenshot. <coughs> you have to excuse me. I don't know. I guess I'm Sorry, talking too much. <laughs> Um, she's showing me the screenshot and she's showing me the text. I was just, I was blown away. I was in shock. Wow. I, it's Hashem. I don't know. I, I don't know. You you can't call it a drunk driver. It's like when, when something like this, it's, and then I heard like other things afterwards that made it even more like, wow, this is insane. We're going to ask more of that special water later. <laughs> you should know um, around the, the night after or a couple nights after. Um, Thank you. Meaningful Minute arranged like a Zoom event with Zahava. Because we figure there's a lot of friends of, of Lee Elstrom Tag and they're reeling, you know? So we we said, okay, we're going to do it on Zoom. Zahava is going to join. She agreed to join. She's like, I don't want... My like, Hazel, how can I put it on? Can I, you know, Sava doesn't like putting her face on camera. I said, right. You know, could we record it? She's like, okay. I think it was scheduled for like 8 p.m. And it was already 7.55 and I just had opened the Zoom. And there's a thousand people in the waiting room. And Zoom Max is out of a thousand. A thousand people oh. in the waiting room. So, you know, let them all in. People are texting. Like, we can't get in. We can't get in. Okay, okay we're going to. But Zahava spoke. And if, if, if you look at the people on, there's just just girls crying just frame after frame after frame of just girls crying in pain in pain and zahava did what she does she's amazing the video is still on it's on youtube because zahava gave permission and fifteen thousand people the next day watched it 
and like the, like talk about like things the feedback that we got from the you know, what people were able to get from that and chizuk you know it's 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 tremendous it's and you hear stories you know like you know I'm sure after you know after you're finding out information so you hear about the text and then maybe you hear about uh, that she was dancing and maybe you hear but to me it comes back to like it was circled on her calendar she was so excited for this reunion yeah that's yeah talk like they say like people have premonitions right like to you what does that mean so i try to think of a lot like the week before and the two weeks before um you know there's like a lot of stories that came out about leo right and for us like as a family you know when we hear the stories it's not like oh oh my gosh like shocking you know it's yeah. like that's leo that's that's who leo is to us um but then to see how she tapped and touched like hundreds and thousands, like the amount of like emails I was getting and DMs of people just wanting to share stories of how Liel touched them. And I'm like, what? Like she's just a little 15 year old girl. Like, yes, all these, whatever me they're saying about her is all true. But just the fact that she reached out and tapped into so many people, that's. Is there a story that stands out for you that you can share with us? so many stories oh my gosh so many stories i know there's one that just popped in your head over all the others tell me which one i'm not a mind reader i'm not sure oh, oh, i thought you were telling me like, i'm not story. Shlomo Levenger, <laughs> like. <laughs> no the way you made it sound um oh gosh i didn't so have any many. of the magic water yet so i can't <laughs> so many well i'm gonna tell you like a story whatever there's so many not this one popped actually i'm gonna share with you in a second a story two stories that two people shared with me this week they're beautiful but um this week the first this time. week actually wow. one of them i i hope shimia dar is okay with me sharing it she shared something with me i saw her at the concert last week and she shared something with me and then one her teacher shared something with me and i was just like wow um so what was i saying before that you were saving two stories. It sounded right, like you were, you were about stories. to say one that you remembered and then you were going to... Oh, so I was yeah. saying, you were telling me like about two weeks before, I was like, Leah left me an apology letter on my pillow for nothing. Literally for nothing. Um, she came home and she said to me, she said to me, Ima, I left for you a letter on your pillow. And I was like, okay, I went to my room and I saw she wrote, you know, with like a lot of warning signs, nobody open, nobody open. Mm -hmm. And I opened it up and it was just, it was just an apology letter. Like, hi, Ma, I'm sorry for, I don't even know for what, it was for nothing. Just apologizing for her being stressed out late, lately from school and like, just whatever. So I kind of laughed and then I threw the letter into the drawer next to my bed. And then later on, she comes into my room. I so did not make a thing out of it that I didn't even say anything to her. Then later she goes, did you read my letter? And I'm like, what are you apologizing for? Did you do something that <laughs> I don't know? She goes, no, I just, I just feel like I haven't been myself lately. Wow. And I'm like, really? She's like, I don't know. I just feel like I've been so, Ima, I've been so upset and stressed out. I haven't been myself. And if you felt it, I just wanted to apologize. Wow. And I still laughed at her. Like, I'm like, get out of here. It's like, who are you talking about? <laughs> you know, and then afterwards I had to, I went to the drawer and Baruch Hashem, the letter was still there. So I still have the letter. Um, so yeah, because you were asking me, you know, when they say. Premonitions, yeah. Um, oh. Wow, wow, wow. So two special stories I'm going to share because that's like very fresh on my mind. Sure. Um, so actually one of her teachers had shared um, a story with me last week. Um she was saying that one day the girls were on the bus in the morning going to school. And I guess they had a final that morning. So they were all like in a rush to be in school, like on time. And one of the girls that lives close nearby um, had messaged the school chat, I guess, like um, not the school, the grade chat, asking if anyone already uh, has in school or she can get a ride. She didn't have a ride or she missed the bus. I'm not even sure exactly the, the story, but basically Liel realizes from what she writes that she is starting to walk to school and there's like no ride for her, And but they're on the bus. So everyone was like, no, we're on the bus. And like, yeah, no ride. Okay. So Liel actually said to her, call me and I'm going to be on the phone with you while you're walking to school wow. until you get to school, just to make sure that you're okay. 
And Liel actually called her. And while she walked, which was like, whatever, a five minute walk, she walked to school. But Liel made it a thing to stay on the phone with her, to talk to her until she got to school. Like, it might seem so little, but like, you know. Presence of mind of a, of a yeah. year old girl. When to she think realized about her like friend. she she was looking for like a ride or to walk with someone or whatever. So that was one thing which which is very Liel character. It's not for me, it's not like, wow, Liel did that. It's a very Liel thing to do. Um, it's just amazing how other people see it and how yeah. she, she actually used it with her friends in school. And actually she It's a very Liel thing to do. I yeah. love that expression. It's a very Liel thing to it's do. It's like a verb. Yeah. Also, Liel, the name, is that God is to me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And when when a person lives with Hashem in their life, oh. those are the types of things they behaviors do. and actions Liel that you take was outside of yourself. Liel like Hashem. She fully lived with Hashem. Fully. Um, um, this is another cute story, but like, I mean, this is like after, this is not like, you know, it, it happened yeah. like whatever, a few months ago, Shimi was sharing with me a story. She was doing a bat mitzvah recently. And um, she said when she got to the bat mitzvah, um, she noticed that there were like two different like schools over there. I guess the girl went to do two different schools. So she invited like friends from both schools. So she's like, when you go to this kind of a bat mitzvah, you can feel like a little bit the separation because it's two different schools. You know, right. it's not like the girls are being clicky. It's just, they have their friends and their friends. So she was like saying how she thought how to get the girls to be together. So she took the mic and actually she hears me. I need the video. She said she has a video <laughs> for me. Um, she went over to the table to the girls and she said to them, who's going to be the person that's going to bring like everyone together and like to dance together and like to be on the dance floor. And she said, it's crazy. This one girl jumped out and she raised her hand and she said, I am going to pull a Liel tonight. Wow. Mm. Wow. And this happened recently. You're saying. Yeah. This is to show you, this is what Liel was. She's, she was, that glue and her and her her the impact that she had left and those 15 years is still living out and that's what it means i guess you know the term living for liel that's what it means yep. just you know keeping her her legacy and her 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 life vibrant and alive by doing the things that she would do yeah yeah does that bring you and your family like does that make you guys happy to see of course yeah you know, the more, um, Liel has a lot of light to her. She had a lot of light. She would walk into her room and the room would just be like already like lit with simcha and smiles. It's naturally, that's who, she was naturally like that. Like coming from school, she would walk home and um, music would be pumping on her, on her phone. And she'd walk in dancing, walk into the kitchen, like tease me. Like she was just joy and simcha all the time. So you can only imagine the void that we're feeling. Yeah. But when this stuff comes up and like the stories about her and how, you know, people are pulling a Liel or, you know, they're trying to be like Liel. That's, of course, it gives like, um, I don't even know if comfort is the word, but it's definitely, it, it feels, feels right. It feels good, um, you know, to spread Liel's light. And we'll be right back to this episode of the Meaningful People podcast. You know what? You're standing on your back porch and you're looking outside. You're saying, hey, this backyard looks too bare and it's getting nice outside. What are my kids going to play with? Well, how about a perfect swing set from Swing It? They are literally the number one people to go to to order a swing set for your children. Invite your family over, extended family, immediate family. Have them go outside and be together when the weather is nice and play on one of their state-of-the-art swing sets. Their swing sets are also built to last. Their structures are made with solid hardwood beams, which are then wrapped in fade-proof, weatherproof PVC so the wood won't rot and won't give the kiddos splinters. It includes a 20-year full-service warranty. So, people, it's a long day. Summer's coming up. Swing sets, it's that time of year. Head to Swing It. Hit the link in the description in the show notes of this episode. You know what? Pesach's also really just upon us. You want to think about Afi Komen? Get an Afi Komen present from Swing It, okay? It could be for a friend. It could be a gift card to Swing It. It could be for your kids. What are we getting for Pesach? What are we getting for Pesach? Look in the backyard. That's what we got for Pesach from Swing It. Enjoy the rest of this episode. You know, we had a guest not long ago, uh, Rav Asaf Haimov, who also 
is living with the he's he's endured and he's thrived right. in the challenge of the unfathomable pain of losing a child a daughter and what's striking to me about your experience is that a lot of the discussion that we had with him was about his preparation for that pain for that loss and he was he had the opportunity to do that work leading up to the goodbye and what's striking about your story is that there was no there was no preparation whatsoever no. it was no. one second to the next this challenge of finding the thank you hashem within the pain was from from the first second yeah I think about it a lot because, you know, sometimes people always like, um, they try to introduce me to other like grieving parents, um, you know, to like just talk and let things out. And it's always the same thing, you know, like I haven't not yet met someone that went through a shocking, like all of the sudden, like no prep, no nothing. So it's like our talks don't always like, it's like different. The, yeah. pa the pain it's the same pain. It's not like one is better than the other, but it's different. different. Yeah. It's different. So it's very hard to explain like what we processed at the beginning, what sometimes we're still processing. Sometimes I'm still in shock. Sometimes I'll walk into her room and I'll be like, what? It really happened? Like, it's not, do you know what I'm saying? Like everything yeah. is like standstill. Her nap stack is still there. Everything is like, it's just frozen in time. So yeah, it's, um, but I think this whole thing of like living with thank you Hashem, I have to say it's 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 thanks to Liel. It's she. This is who Liel. It's who she was. It's who she is. She still instills this to us. She like it's, it's it's all Liel. It's this is. Yeah. Can I ask if the the ideology the the emuna that runs through this thread uh, as you're terming it as thank you Hashem. Was that a presence in your life leading up to it? Or was it more introduced and embraced thereafter? I think it was, no, to say if I had like bitachon like I have now, no way. No, <laughs> I would complain to Hashem all the time. I'm like, no. <laughs> no. That's no. a hard no, I think. <laughs> Listen, it's in the house, you know, you talk about it all the time, you know, you sing all the thank you Hashem all the time with the kids and then Hashem is here, Hashem is there, you know, it's 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 talked about, right? It's it's in the house. Um, the question is, is like when the time comes to practice it. Um, when the rubber meets the road. Yeah. So the question is, did I practice it from like the beginning? Um, it's a question that I, I still like, I ask myself like how and like when. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like at the beginning there was just a lot processing, like just shock, like it was a shock. And then when the shock a little bit wore off and it was like now like, oh my goodness, what had happened? Um, I think Hashem was kind enough to um, send us all these little messages to show us how it wasn't just a car accident. It wasn't just a drunk driver. Like, just look how special Liel was. Look at all the things she did. Look, look at like, you know, also, I don't know if you know the story, like with her phone. For anyone that it's, might not, I, feel I, free to share it. Sure. So I'm just, there were a lot of little things and little messages I tell you, when I found myself to be in a very, very, that like deep, deep pain, that is just like nothing can help and you feel choking. This is when in my deepest, darkest, that's when I turn to Hashem and I beg him to help me. And I have to say crazy enough, every time I've begged, when I say beg, I mean like from the, from the kishka, from the inside, he would always send me a sign and it will always be something like, what? Like something, you know. I'm going to give you an example. Um, we, okay, let me give you this example and then the other one, okay? And I think it was the third day, third morning of Shiva, okay? My husband already came back from Israel and um, I woke up in the morning at like a little bit before six, a few minutes before like six, and my kids slept with me in my bed. And in the mornings, like I would wake up 
And I would just look around the room to see, like, if it's a dream. Like, I would look, first of all, I would look to see if my, the shiva clothes were, like, on, on like, the, you know, like, on the side of the bed. Like, oh. Like, I would look for signs to see if, like, I'm waking up from a nightmare. So I woke up. And I remember, like, that morning, like, that third morning that I woke up. I woke up and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't. And I looked at my kids that were sleeping next to me. They were, like, passed out. The, the, it was dark outside. I'm like, I really can't do this. And I sat at the edge of the bed. And I just started crying. And I'm like, this is too painful, Hashem. I'm like, help me with my pain. Like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't, I can't, I can't live like this. Like, how much longer? Another minute, another shiva, another day. I can't, I can't. And as I was like, sort of like meditating in my pain and trying to connect and to feel Hashem inside me, and I'm like, Hashem, please help me. All of a sudden, I start hearing music. And I'm like, okay, this is getting to my brain right now because when I <laughs> meditate very hard, and I'm like, okay, I'm hearing music and I'm trying to like, sort of like clear my brain to see if it's like in my brain. I'm like, no, there was music. It's six o'clock in the morning, everyone's sleeping. And I'm looking around the room and I'm like, wait, wait, it's coming from like my drawers, like on top of my drawers, we had like all our clothing since my kids slept in the room with me. So it was like tzitziot, pajamas, like shiva clothes, like balagan, my husband came back from Israel, like the, the whole like chaos and balagan in the room. And I'm like, the music is coming from there, from like this mess. Wow. And I, I walk over and all of a sudden I'm hearing, it's Ishai Rebo playing Sibata Sibot, wow. right? And I'm like, Hashem, like, you know, like wow. I go and I, like, I move all the clothes and the music is getting a little bit louder as I'm clearing more and more of like, the clothes over. And what do I see? Liel's phone. And it's an alarm that says, good morning, it's time for school. And it's Ishai Rebo playing Sibata Sibot. <sighs> and I'm standing there and I'm like, Liel, first of all, does not have an alarm on her phone because we wake her up every morning at 6.20. This alarm went off at 6. Why is the phone going off? And why is the phone in the room? And I don't understand what's going on. So I'm standing there and I'm shaking that I can't even turn off the alarm because I think that like Hashem is right here next to me giving me this message, you know, playing Sibata Sibot. And I'm like, Hashem. And it's like, Liel, it's like, what's going on? And it's painful, but I'm feeling very like, and then my husband walks into the room. He's like, what's going on? Like, he walk off on the, <laughs> from the song. He takes the phone, turns it off. We're both crying. And I'm like, Effie, what is happening? Like, this doesn't make sense. And he's like, what do you mean? It's Liel's alarm. She doesn't have an alarm. We wake her up every morning to school. And it's very hard to wake her up to school. Like, Liel <laughs> loves to sleep. How can that be that there's an alarm at 6 o'clock? Like, like, Hashem, did you set that? Like, did you just do that? Like, what's going on? So I'm very confused. And at this point already, we got up, we, we changed, we go downstairs and the day kind of passes and the family comes and my nieces come over and like, we're all like hanging out. The Shabbat before, my nieces slept over for Shabbat. So one of my nieces slept with Liel in the room, in Liel's room. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, guys, you got to hear this like crazy story. So I'm telling them what happened in the morning. I'm like the alarm and I got up and then I, I was talking to Hashem and then all of a sudden Sibata Sibot and they're like, and I'm like, and I don't get it, but Leah doesn't have an alarm. This is insane. I don't get it. And my niece is sitting there and she's like, oh, so Damaya, you don't know the story? I'm like, what story? She's like, Leah, like the alarm story. I'm like, no, no, please do share. She's like, oh, I wouldn't have known about it if I didn't sleep here last week. I'm like, what happened? She says to me, um, yeah, you know, like, so whatever, Friday night I went to bed and um, Liel's ceiling fan was on. So the room was like very cold. It's December, like it's freezing outside. So she said, oh, Liel, shoot, your ceiling fan is on and it's Shabbat. Like, what are we going to do? She goes, no, I left it on on purpose. She's like, why would you leave a ceiling fan on on purpose? She's like, oh, you don't know, I get very hot at night. I, I don't like when the heat is on. The heat makes the room very hot. I like to put the ceiling fan on. She's like, you're you're hot, you're, she's like, she's like, you're hot. She's like, what are you talking about? She's like, I'm freezing. She's like, I'm so sorry. Let me give you an extra sweatshirt. She gave her an extra blanket. She's like, I'm so sorry. I didn't think to turn it off. I'm always hot. And then she went to bed and she was wearing a tank top. 
And so my niece says to her, you're going to sleep in a tank top? You're not even going to wear a sweatshirt with the fan on? She's like, no, you don't understand. I'm always hot. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's always hot in my room. And she's like, okay. She's like, you know, I actually, I wear a tank top to sleep like every night because I'm so hot. But in the morning, I set my alarm at 6 a.m. to get up and wear a more covered pajama. And I go back to sleep. And my niece is like, Leo, this is like the dumbest thing I ever heard. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, you put your alarm, you get up to go to school. She's like, no, 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 you don't understand. I go back to sleep so my parents would wake me up. And I don't want, when my father comes into their room, I'm wearing a tank top. You know, I want to be nice and covered when my father wakes me up. Leo, but if you're putting an alarm and you're getting out of bed and you're changing into another pajamas, are you kidding me? Just change into your school clothes. And she goes, you don't understand. I like it when my parents wake me up. I like it when my father comes to wake me up. So I wake up before and I wear a more covered pajama and I just go back to sleep. So wow. then I'm, he can wake me up and I can be comfortable that I'm not like wearing, you know, a tank top. And when my niece shared that with me, I was like, I would have never known that. And it was just the, that moment that like I needed something from Hashem and he gave it to me. I don't even know how Liel's phone got to my room. It's crazy how you mentioned um, that you were sitting there in that moment and, and begging Hashem for, for to take some of that pain off of you. And you described how the, f the phone, the music was coming from the Shiva clothing. Yeah. That's where it was under. Yeah. Like it was from the, it was from the thing that signified the deepest pain. Yeah, I didn't even pain. think about that. Yeah. Like the deepest pain is coming from there. I don't even know what that means, but it means something maybe. No, so, I'm, so it just goes back to this whole thank you, Hashem, of where like the more I, even in my in my pain, even with my tears, even sometimes with my screaming, like I, 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 I channel it to Hashem. And I always feel that he'll, he'll, he'll send me something, you know, like. Yeah. My father always remarked, when uh, he would tell us, when he would like teach us how to drive, um, he would say when he got his first driving, when he was taking driving lessons back in the, I don't know, 60s. <laughs> Sorry, Ab, I don't know. It's a long time ago. But he said it was one, it was, it, the teacher said, tomorrow morning, 5 a.m., let's meet in the parking lot. It was a winter day, and they met in the parking lot, and they were in a, there was a sheet of ice. The teacher said, I'm going to show you what to do when you're skidding on ice. So the drive teacher's driving and he hits the brakes and all of a sudden this, the car starts skidding. It's turning. He's like, what do I do? And then all the kids, the guys are like, turn the other way. He said, no, that's how you lose control. You got to turn into the skid. When you turn into the skid, the car corrects itself. And you're able to be safe. So it's like when, when things are, are painful and, it, you know, sometimes when we, when we tense and restrict and we try to push away, it, it causes more pain. It causes more hurt. You're, but if you lean into it and you say, Hashem, this is where I'm supposed to be. The music's coming from the shiva clothes. I'm going to put those clothing on and I'm going to, that's, that's the ticket. That's the ticket out. Yeah. Yeah. That's. It the, occurs to me as well that the music that you heard was a direct result of Liel's innocence and her, yeah, just her, her beauty. And how her how she was sensitive, yeah, to how your husband would come upon her in the morning, but she still wanted to be woken up by her father, <laughs> and that was the hug that you got when you needed. Yeah, it. yeah, totally. I mean, I I was able to like get dressed and go downstairs, and it was like the third day. You know, it's like it was give you chizuk? so hard. It's very hard to say if it gave you chizok. I feel like you go to a shir, like you yeah. hear something inspiring, you get a chizok, and it's very hard to say if I was comforted. It gave me a sense of, um, it's like Hashem is here. Which is like, that's, yeah. And, and honestly, like, this is what I work on all the time because, you know, sometimes you don't feel Hashem and, and that's the hardest. And I feel like I can go through my days without feeling him. So, you know, this is where I've like, you know, like my bitachon again, it's like, it's come from a lot of learning. I read a lot of books. Um, and I work on trying to feel him and rely on him for everything. And when I do, it's, it's like a blanket, you know, it's like, I know he's going to take care of everything. I know, I know we're going to be okay. So it's always just like, thank you, Hashem. We'll be right back to this episode in just a second, but guess what? You know, the weather is getting nice outside and that just means one big thing. Houses are selling. 
more people are selling their homes, people are starting to move. And when you're buying a house, something that's super important is title. You need title. If you know what I'm talking about, then you need to reach out to ilstitle.com. You know, title is a very, very important process of buying a home. And you want to make sure that the title company in your corner is not one that's going to, on closing day, say, oh, sorry, we have an issue. It's stressful enough as it is, but with ILS title, there are no horror stories. Rain or snow, volcano or tornado, ILS title is going to be there for you. So reach out to them at ilstitle.com. Maybe tell your broker or your agent who sold you a home to say, hey, let's use, I, let's use ILS for our title this year because I heard about them on Meaningful People. That's a good reason, no? Well, anyways, enjoy the rest of this episode. Something that I, that I find especially challenging, perhaps was challenging, or maybe you'll, you'll tell me otherwise, was that you made, you made a simcha for your other child. She had, oh, got, she wow. had gotten married. And that <laughs> <laughs> so I guess take us through, you know, I guess balancing both emotions. It was probably an extremely emotional time. Um, what, what was that like? You know what? I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to share something with you. So Natalie, the first guy she ever dated was David. Okay. Um, so they, they started dating. I think it was back in November. They went on a bunch of dates and um, she wasn't so sure because he was the first guy you know, when you're going out for the first time and everything seems perfect. It's too classic. Right? It's like, yeah. can't be. You know, the parents are maybe just. So know. she was really nervous. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean, by the way. My wife but, is the first girl that I dated. Really? Yeah. Oh, for real. And she, I remember she kept asking me, she's like, how do you know? Like, what do I compare? It's like, how do you know? Like, maybe I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, she was just very, you know, like it was yeah. just going like too perfect. So they got to like a point. I think in their dating where it was just like, okay, either it's like the next step or, you know, so it was Friday and she got very like nervous and she said to me, Ima, you know what? I, I don't think this is for me. I don't think this is for me. And like, I, I, and I said, why? And she didn't even give me like a good reason. It was just that she felt as the first guy she dated and things are just going like very smoothly. We called up the Shadchan and we, she told the Shadchan whatever, whatnot. And she messaged um, David and, Said, like, it's not going to work out. Saturday night, um, David messaged um, Natalie. And he said to her, but I don't understand. <laughs> Things are going so great between us. You know, um, what happened? And, and, and like, I'm not going to get into details. And they, she said to him, should I go out with him? Should we, you know, he said, if we should go out and talk. I said, yeah, because there's nothing really that you're saying that bothers you that I'm going to say like, oh, this guy's not for you. I mean, he sounds amazing and, and you're, you know, everything is being checked off. You're just nervous. So yeah, go talk out your emotions. Go talk to him. So, so that night she got dressed to go on a date. That was the night of the accident. And I was with Liel on FaceTime. So Liel on Friday, she knew that Natalie was not interested to go out with David. And then she said, where's Natalie going? And I said, she's going on a date with David. She's like, what? She's going on a date? So she started singing wedding songs oh on goodness. the FaceTime. And she said, Ima, we need to go get dresses for the wedding. And like, and then Natalie was getting annoyed with her. She's like, <laughs> Liel's just being so weird. Stop. Like, you're being so annoying. It's just a date. You know, like, that's how our conversation was that night. Um, when Natalie came back from the date, she came into my room and she said, Ima, you're up. Can we talk? And I said, yeah. I said, how did it go? She said, no, you went really well. And I think, you know, I think, I think we're going to go to the, like the next. And I said, you know what? We need to talk about this in the morning. <laughs> the next wow. thing you know, we were waking up like an hour later. Wow. Okay. Wow. Um, so now to say like a simcha and this together, I feel like. You know, it didn't come out of nowhere. It was like, it, it was already there. Like intertwined almost. I, yes. I can't explain it. It was like. You did a really good job of explaining it. <laughs> That's amazing. That's incredible. Did you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's like, sometimes I think I don't make sense. <laughs> and it's like, and it's like, but, Liel, she like wished miles of in a way. By singing the wedding song, she like wished miles of to her sister. It was actually even the night of the wedding. It was, you know what? I told Natalie, um, Whatever it was like. Then like after Shloshin, we came back and her and David were still seeing each other. And 
in my head, it was just like, okay, nothing is happening until after this, like, a whole year, you know? But then, like, months later, like, our rabbi came and he was like, look, they're religious, like, you, you, can't, you can't hold them off for so long. Let them at least get engaged. And then before you knew it, one thing, like, led to yeah. another. And then to um, the wedding. And at the wedding, actually, I, I have even a video of it because it's, like, it's just crazy to say how Liel was, like, part of everything. And we even, we felt her at the Simcha, like, She's felt everywhere. Like, Liel, like, sh she's sends me these messages and does things, like, all the time. Um, at the wedding, so, you know, when you, by, by the way, like, in Persian weddings, and you know, all, like, everyone walks down the aisle, and it's, like, the dancing, and all the cousins want to walk. We're so up to I, the part of the episode where the the, the Persians are hitting <laughs> on the Ashkenazim. Okay, I, it took us an hour to get there, but we're there. <laughs> So Natalie made a playlist, right, for her, for for the wedding, for whoever was walking down to what whatever parts, you know, like with the music. And she went through it so many times, like with the DJ, like this is walking to this, when this ends, after this song, and this song, and it was like all set. And which, by the way, also her song, Walking Down the Aisle, Bati Legani, she originally wanted that song, then she switched it to another song. So when that played at the wedding, we were like shocked. I'm like, Nat. She's like, no, I decided last minute. It felt right for her. We were not even thinking about the meaning of the words to the song. Um, so basically everyone walks down, right? And then like, there's now it's, it's now it's only the um, the ring boys and then the flower girls and then us. So you know, I'm crying, I'm a mess, dominating to Hashem. Like, I'm like, okay, this is like, you know, it's very like your nerves are like skyrocket. The boys go out and she put like a song for them. And then the girls were supposed to go out to a Disney song to Moana. But for some reason, the, the maitre d' that was taking care of everything had the girls go out like with the boys. So they were walking out with the ring boys. Like they didn't have their moment, the flower girls. And Nally goes, oh, no, 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 no. And she was like trying to like hold on to the last <laughs> girl. Like, don't go. That's not your song. <laughs> and the guy was like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It's, it's fine. They already, half of the flower girls left. Let the rest of them go. She's like, but that's not a flower girl song. They're walking to the ring boys. And he was like, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> and Ali was like, oh gosh, now watch. Now Moana is going to start playing. So I'm like, okay, the probably the DJ will skip it, right? They walk. Moana. Oh, behold, Moana starts a Disney song. <laughs> and the entire crowd stands up <laughs> on their feet. But Nally's not going to walk out to Moana, right? Like, she has her song. So the, the, the guy there, he's like under a tight schedule. He's like, okay, you're ready? Like, veil down. And she's like, no, 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 no. I am not walking to Moana. That was a mistake. Yeah. Like, that was the flower girls were supposed to be now. Tell the DJ to stop Moana. So he's trying to get the DJ, like, on the other line. Like, telling him to stop the song, that there was an error. He's not hearing him. But for every other song, he heard him. Like, he would say, okay, next. Grandparents coming out. Okay, next. When it came to this error, he was not hearing him. Moana played from the beginning till end. Oh my gosh. People are standing there for two minutes. No bride is coming out. And David is freaking out under the chuppah. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's like. And then we come out. <laughs> A day after the wedding, one of my friends calls me up and she goes to me, That is so beautiful. Did you do that on purpose for Leo to walk down alone down the aisle? What are you talking about? She's like, to Moana, right? Leah loves Moana. She walked down to it. And like, it's just, it's like, no, that was a mistake. And she's like, I want to show you the video. And when you see the video, every time I see it, I start crying. I promise you, Leah went to the DJ and she just went like this to him. And she was like, the girls are going to go out and I'm going to have my moment. Wow. I'm going to walk out before my sister. And she walked and she was there and we felt her. As much as it was funny, it was... The crowd also stood. Everyone stood. There was wow. silence. And it's a Disney song. Yeah. Wow. So it's those little things that it's like, thank you, Hashem. Like, thank wow. you. Thank you that I felt Liel at the wedding. Thank you that she she got to walk. We all keep saying, we're like, that was Liel's It wasn't moment. a mistake. No. Svar Makdashim say that all of the neshamas that are connected to the chasen and the kala participate at the chuppah. The ancestors, the descendants, the tzaddikim, and any neshama that is connected to the chasen and kala, believe it, one hundred percent. You there. feel it. You can feel it under the. You can feel it under the chuppah. You can totally feel it. Yes, it was crazy emotions. Yeah. But 
like what I want to say is that I, I took it the other way that like I knew Liel was there. Like, I would imagine like her dancing with me. Like I imagined her in the dress. Like I imagined mm. us like in the circle. So it's. Every story yeah. you're saying, you know, it gets to a certain point. I'm like, oh yeah, it's crazy. And then you take it to like the stuff. <laughs> I'm like, that isn't normal. <laughs> when you shared the story of the phone playing, you were remembering that as one of two stories, I think. Um, so there was another thing with her phone, which that was like, Till today, it blows my mind away. But I remember I was like shocked over it for like a few months. So it was like another, it was another like, thank you, Hashem. Um, it was not this Adar. It was last year. And it was Rosh Chodesh Adar, I remember. I think it was a Monday morning. I woke up and I said to my husband, I said, oh my gosh, I had a dream about Liel. I'm not going to share the dream, but it was, it was a good dream. But I had a dream about Liel. But I woke up and I was like, I miss her so much. Like, a pain again, like this pain, it just like sometimes comes and it just washes. Like, it's like, you, it's like you can't control it. So I remember I sat on, on the couch and I was like in so much pain and I felt that I needed to do something to like, just heal it a little bit. Um, so I, I'm going to have to go back before I, I go to here. Another phone story, which that's how it's connected to that during Shiva, on one of the days, Charlene Amanoff, she wrote um, an article on Liel, mm -hmm. and I think it was for the Jewish, um, the Jewish home, the Jewish, uh, something like that. the Jewish something. Yeah. And they needed a picture of Liel, and we couldn't find a picture of her. Meaning, they didn't ask me, like, they were asking the girls, like, the paper, they want a nice picture of Liel. So Nelly, my, my older daughter, was being very overprotective. She's like, no, Liel wouldn't have liked her hair like this or this or that, or that. And then they found a picture that was like, she thought maybe I would be okay with. And they, they came and asked me, they said, can this picture be in the paper? I said, it's okay. I said, Liel has such beautiful pictures. She's like, well, where are they? I said, go to her phone. She has tons of pictures on her phones. So my niece went upstairs to grab Liel's phone and it was off. And when she turned it on, um, you know, like, it's like, it's really, it like really breaks my heart. Her friends till today, her friends still send her messages. I don't Aww. open them. It's, it's all like, it's like in the, the, the hundreds of the thousands. They still send her like messages. Um, and she turned on. So, you know, like when you turn on your phone and then like all the messages like start rolling in. Ding, so, it's ding, like, ding, yeah. so she held it and she didn't like want to touch it. She just let all the messages roll in. And then after it stopped, she sees that on the top, there's two time sensitive reminders. One of them says, Mencha, you can do it. Like she's cheering herself on at 1.15. And one of them is at 5 p.m., set for every day under time sensitive, simply like this. Hashem loves and stay strong. Wow. So my niece sees this and she's like, that's insane. So she doesn't want to touch the phone and open up to the pictures. So she took a screenshot of it, which I have the screenshot saved from like that date. And she runs downstairs and she goes to me, I have to show you something crazy with Liel's phone. And I said, what? And she's like, look what she has said on her phone. Did you know that she had this kind of reminders? No, it's crazy. Why would she write Hashem loves and stay strong every day at 5 p.m.? The whole week we were talking about it. And then our Rav came over one of the mornings and I showed it to him. And he smiled at me and he said, you know who this message is for. You know, like she's, she put it in there before for you. Shem loves, stay strong. And I'm like, you didn't know Liel was like that. Like that she at five o'clock, I feel like, you know, five o'clock for some people, it's happy hour. I feel like for us, it's like crunch time. It's like, it's dark outside. We're, we're hungry. It's dinner. It's homework. She was on the bus. Like, it's like, it's not five o'clock. It's not so much fun. And that's the time she needed Hashem loves and stay strong. So the whole week we were talking about it and we were like just so blown away. And I remember we kept asking her friends, all of her best friends. I said, did you know that Liel had this reminder? Did you know? I asked my kids, my boy, nobody knew about it. Nobody had any idea. Now we're going back to that morning, Rosh Chodesh Adar, when I woke up and I said I had a dream about Liel and I'm in so much pain. I'm in so much pain. I'm like, Hashem, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do the pain again. Help me. I need help. I need help. And I'm like, okay. I need to know that Hashem loves and I need to stay strong. I need Liel's reminder on my phone as well. Wow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Liel's phone. I'm going to turn it on because her phone is off next to my bed. We don't open it. 
said, and I'm going to copy her reminder exactly, like the way she did the emoji and the way she like, she's exactly, that's what I need. I need every day a reminder. I need to know that Hashem loves me and to stay strong. I go, I turn on her phone and I see the reminder and I start typing it out on my phone. So I was like, wait a minute, if it's a reminder, how did she do it? So I go and I open up the reminder and in an iPhone, you know, you have tasks, right? And I see she made tasks. So I wanted it to be the same way, right? So what was the task? She made that under a task. She created, okay, if you don't know the story, you don't know the story? Okay. You ready for this? Because I'm ready. It, it took me months to process this. Your iPhone, you open up, you have tasks, shopping, whatever, you know? One of the tasks simply says in these words, bringing Mashiach. Sounds like I'm making it up. I promise you. I'm going to show you afterwards a screenshot of uh, her phone. And I'm like, I would never hear Liel talk about Mashiach, you know, but she actually made a task, a to-do to bring Mashiach. This girl thought she's bringing Mashiach. And when you click on the task, there's two reminders underneath there, under time sensitive, that need to be checked off every day. One is to say Mincha every day at 115. Hmm. And one, simply, Hashem loves and stays strong. Wow. That's it. That's it. Is that who? Wow. And I sat there. Thank you, Hashem. Like my pain that I was like, was like burning and like, I felt like I can't do this anymore. And I go and I look at her phone. I'm like, thank you, Hashem. Thank you for directing me. Like, I feel like Hashem navigated me. He's like, go upstairs, turn on your daughter's phone, go to the tasks. Because we saw it during the week of Shiva already, but this is already like two months later. So yeah, Hashem, it's fire. Hashem is doing everything. Hashem. What, what's Hashem. so what's so remarkable about that is that people talk about bringing Mashiach and you have to do these extraordinary feats. What everyone needs to do to bring Mashiach is that task of just knowing that Hashem loves and, and be strong. strong. Yeah. Wow. It's also it's also I know there's also Dav Mincha. It's like it's like you don't have to stand on your head to bring Mashiach. Just do it, Hashem. Tells you to dav mincha, you know dav shachris. Wow. You know, I actually I took this to Rabbi Feiner. Um, we went to see Rabbi Feiner about two weeks. It was like two weeks after Shiva. Aliza took us to him. Um, so then afterwards, I went to him also with these reminders. I met Rabbi Feiner for the first time. Um, I think it was like two weeks after. Huh. Um, his wife was Liel's te teacher at Tag. Um, so when I went to see Rabbi Feiner, um, the reason why Aliza took us was because I wasn't finding any, like any comfort. Like I wasn't at peace at all. Like 24 hours, I was just like, Tense. It was, yeah. yeah, there was just no peace at all. And I was telling her and I'm like, I just don't get it. This whole story, I just don't get it. And I don't get where Liel is. Like, where is she? Like, I, I don't get it. Like, I'm just, I need to know where Liel is. And um, she said to me, you know what? I think it would do good to you if you speak to Rabbi Feiner. So I said, okay, yeah, fine, let's go. Um, that whole time period from, like, the accident and those two weeks, you know, a lot of people asked me if I was, like, angry or angry with Hashem. No, I was just, like, I don't get it. You're it looking, was, you're searching. Right? Yeah. So when we went to see Rabbi Feiner... And I went to his office. Actually, over there, I got angry because, you know, like Hashem, he's not tangible. Like you can't touch him, right? So it's like I can't get, how to get angry with someone you can't see. Like It's like fighting with a ghost. Yeah, I need to yell at you. I need to like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like very hard to get angry with Hashem. But when I went to Rabbi Fine, I was like, okay, that's it. I'm going to, you know, it's a rough. He's like Hashem's shaliach. I'm going to mm. get angry, get angry him. with him. And <laughs> he can send my message to Hashem. So that's really insightful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. To be able to release that expression. Yeah. On someone who you view as, as a ambassador. Yeah. Of Hashem. Yeah. It was like, you, you go tell him. Being a rabbi ain't easy. Yeah. You know? Oh, not easy at all. <laughs> we went into his office with Natalie, Effie and, and I, and we're sitting in the office and so I'm Israeli. And if I get angry, like my Israeli side, like comes, 
takes the best of me, you know? So I was like... It switches <laughs> from English to Hebrew at the highest pitch. Yeah, I, I become a little bit... So I, like, I walk in and like already my husband had noticed like on me and he was like, oh, no. And I was like, no. <laughs> like, I need to ask questions. I I have so much to say. He was like, okay, Maya, but be respectful. It's a rough. And I'm like, no, it doesn't matter. I was like, I was like, I was like, you know? And yeah. Rabbi Feiner, for the first time meeting him, he is like so angelic. Yeah. And he speaks like very softly and slowly and like... And I just came in there like, ah, you know, like. No one ever accused Rabbi Feiner of speaking slowly, though. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, he wasn't giving a speech. He was right, sitting yeah. down. And, he was and sitting with a, us yeah. and he was being so sensitive and he was just like, how could I help? You Rabbi Feiner like, like wears I? his heart. Like yes. on his everywhere. Like that's a refiner. And I just really just wanted to catch him on something that he wouldn't be able to answer me. And like, and I knew where I was getting with it. And I was like, I just wanted that rough to tell me like, I don't have the answer, you know? Um, so as soon as we sat there and he said to me, you know, like, what, what could I do to like, you know, to like help? And, and I said to him, you know what? I want you to tell me, where's Leo? No, no, no. Actually, I want you to tell me why. You know, no, 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 no. And like, <laughs> I would not let him talk. I just like, I was like venting out. And I think he realized I was venting. So he kind of sat there with a smile. He let me get it all out. And I said, I need to understand why. And I don't want you to tell me that her time was up. I don't want you to tell me that this was her tikkun. Like, that's a dumb answer to say to a mother that lost a 15-year-old child. Okay. Um, because, you know, you would hear it here and there, you know, like yeah. rabbis will come and try to give you like some chizok and that's not chizok. Like, don't tell me that my child finished their tikkun. Like they were perfect and they left. Like, then why? And I said to him, why would I want to have kids that are, that have such great midot? I'm like, you know, everyone talks about Leah's midot and her personality and character. Like, I mean, why would I want to work on that? Why would I want to put my kids in yeshiva? Why would I want to, why would I want to be such a great person? Right? Let me be completely off the derech. Let me like do my thing. When I get a day before 120, do tshuva, go to Olam Haba, shalom. Like this way I live. This way I don't have to be worried about losing anyone in my life. You know, like yeah. it sounds funny, but like really I came to think about it. Like why would I want to do anything for Hashem? Like why? Like, you know, like. What was the answer? What? So he just listened to me and I'm like, you know, like I got him. Like, let's see how he answers this one. And he says to me, Mrs. Namdar, like you, you really think that people just pass when they like finish their tikkun? Like people actually like live, like they finish their tikkun. It's like, look at like Avram Avinu, look at our avot, imaot. They, they were born holy. Like they didn't die right away. They live for hundreds of years. Why? Because Am Israel, the Jewish nation needed them. We needed them for our tikkunim. A lot of people finish their tikkun in this world, right? They're holy. They're still around to help others with their tikkun. So, you know, it, it doesn't, it's like, you'll live till 120. Don't worry, you and your kids. So I said to him, I mean, in my head, I, 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 that, it didn't come out of my mouth. But in my head, I was like, are you for real? Did you just say that to me? I was like, I'm like, did you just say that? I'm like, you don't see all the people around you that needed Leo? You don't see all the stories? Like, hello, like, just look at everything. Every, like, Leo has gone, like, viral. Everyone's talking about how she was... Uh, you know, how she was the glue. She was this with her friends. Like, I, I, what are you saying? Like her teachers, like the, the things the teachers would say. And he said to me, exactly. Like it was like, mm. you know, like I couldn't catch him on like on anything. And then he said to me, um, you know, if you would look at Liel and her like outreach, everyone that she had reached like in her life, you would look at all like her great neck friends and you would look at um, all the tag girls um, the Sternberg girls, maybe some girls she met from Brooklyn. It's like, let's just say the tri-state area. It's like, you know, let's just say like 25 miles radius. She reached people. She impacted them. She inspired them, right? It's like, Mrs. Namdar, are you realizing what Liel is doing from Shamaim? She tapped into the tri-state area here. She's tapping worldwide. People are shaken to the core from Liel. People have taken so many things upon themselves. There's like the Shema reading, Mincha reading, like challah bakes, people taking mitzvot among, among themselves. But setting it's like, the table before Shabbat. Yeah, setting the table before Shabbat. It's like this is, it has gone worldwide. People were reaching out to me from Brazil, from Australia, like countries that, 
It's like, do you see what she's doing? Hashem needed her. She wasn't doing enough here. She tapped out. She finished. She did Sternberg. She did tag. She did Great Neck. Tapped. She needed more. Wow. And I think that day, I think this is like where my journey to like, um, it's like Hashem. Really? I think it started when I left his office. Wow. Wow. It's amazing. I wanted, I know it's getting late, but there, there's, I just, I feel compelled. I think you're so uniquely positioned to shed a certain light on the movement that is Thank You Hashem. And I, I happen to be very close with some of the founders and some of the forces behind that particular movement. And they do a fabulous job Amazing. of putting something out there that is so right. awesome and fun and geschmack and that everyone is just fired up about. But I think that it's important for people to realize that it's not just a magnet that goes on a car. Right. And it's not just the right. most awesome swag that ever was created. And it's not just incredible music, but it's a message and a movement that is helping people like in your position to live with Hashem yeah. through pain that's beyond anything that anyone can imagine. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. You know, like so we, when you were like asking me before, if it was like this in my house, like prior to this. Yeah. So like with everyone else, like you're saying the magnets and the thank you Hashem and the songs, you know, but it's like, you know, what do you do when the time comes and you, you know, really need to have your bitachon and like rely on Hashem. And I feel like if you are, if Hashem challenges you, like to that extreme, the kind of challenge that I, you know, been through, and you're able to pass that, I feel like it's like getting over that little hump, you know? It's like, it's imagine it's like a mountain, right? And like you're like you're you're singing and you're dancing and thank you, Hashem, you know? But once you pass it on the other side, it's a different thank you, Hashem. Yes, it's the magnets and the dancing, it's all that, but it's different it's mm -hmm. it's it's you're in your nishama it's inside it's real it's real it's the magnet on the soul it's not just on yeah. the car anymore it's not just on the guff yeah. wow it's amazing uh, the last question i, I want to ask you and uh, thank you so much for giving us your time i really I'm, I'm gonna be driving home tonight on fire just in the things you're saying and seeing you know the, the way you're living and i and i know that i'm sure it's not like this for you 24 7 oh, there no. are dark times no. and there are times where the mascara is dripping oh, yeah. yeah you know <laughs> that's how it is but to even be able not to access yeah my right mascara right is going to be crazy in the car yes i wear orange mascara guys don't worry uh, but if 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 leo was sitting right here which you know what very well be very well possible that she is right now um and I'm, I'm i think that maybe you even do this sometimes maybe that you speak to her what, what would you say to her since you know the time has passed since she since she's not here what, what would you say so it's crazy what i'm going to tell you that i say because i do say it to her all the time i always ask her to send me signs what is it that we need to do to bring mashiach faster i always i always ask her like, just send me that little sign. Like, what do we need to do? Is it mincha? What is it? You put it on your phone. I sometimes look for signs in her room. I'm like, what do we need to do? And I, it became like my my mission in life. Like, yeah, it became my goal. Like, I just to bring Mashiach, you know? It's, well, the it's because of answer. her. <laughs> you know what? It's because of her. It's because of the reminders on her phone. It's because of all these little messages. I feel like she she instilled it into me. I wouldn't have been so Mashiachi. I would have been more like, okay, I'm, I'm dealing with a tragedy and like I need to like have bitachon in Hashem. But all of a sudden it turned to like, no, if Liel had a task on her phone bringing Mashiach, then then I'm I'm bringing, I'm bringing. Okay, it's like, it's like if Liel wants me to do this for her. You know, Mertz Hashem, you had mentioned that Brett Feiner said Hashem needed her. Mertz Hashem, the, the task that Hashem is calling your daughter Liel Namdar Four is, is to bring Mashiach. Merz Hashem. Amen. We shall be reunited speedily in our days. Bikar of Mamish, the coming Mashiach. We shall dance, not to Moana, maybe to uh, something no, else. To, to uh, thank you, But Hashem. you know what? Yeah. <laughs> A Moana, thank you, Hashem remix. Hawaii over there, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but honestly, I feel like we can all feel it. Yeah. We feel it. We're so close. It gives me hope. Yeah. This is Namdar. Thank you so much for, you. for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Hope everyone enjoyed this episode of the Meaningful People podcast. Once again, a big thank you to our friend Isaac Newman. 
sponsoring this episode. Lila Lee- Nishmas' mother, Ruchama Peril, Malka, Leah, Basari, Leib, and Hashem. should really, really have an Aliyah. Thank you, Isaac. We really always appreciate your support. Well, Maya Namdar, um, there's no other words. You know, really, really incredible uh, the story that she told. And um, I think that living for Liel, pulling a Liel, doing the things that she had mentioned on this on this episode are are things that we should take away from it uh, to keep that in mind. Whether you're a girl who's going to bas mitzvah or you're a parent in in the workplace or in your home, live for Liel, live for Liel, live for Liel like the Namdars are doing it, um, and it should be a big big schus for her neshama. And you know like. Like Maya said, Mashiach is really the only thing that, that we need right now. Mashiach is what we need, and Mertz Hashem, uh, that'll be coming middle of listening to this episode. That'll be pretty cool, no? Yeah, that chauffeur, it's time to go. Well, anyways, thank you for listening to another episode of Meaningful People. Make sure to leave a rating or subscribe. You know, 74.3% of you who are watching our videos on YouTube are not subscribed. That is not cool. That's like literally walking into a store and just grabbing things off the shelf and leaving without saying thank you. Like, just hit the subscribe button. You don't need to thank us, but just hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate your support. Always, we hope to see you again next week on the Meaningful People podcast. Adios, amigos. Hope you enjoyed this video from Meaningful Minute. We have so much more content for you. You may like this. You may like this. Take your pick. Let us know what you think.